lot of progress here, going through the entire Pentateuch. We had already done Judges and we finished up Ruth last week. And right now we're going to start on 1 Samuel. We're going to do the first three chapters tonight, chapters 1, 2, and 3. Very interesting stuff. Uh, 1 Samuel was one of the historical books. It was written during the time of the Judges. And there's a, as we read through when we did the book of Judges, there was a theme in the book of Judges. They had no king over them. And everyone did what was right in their own eyes. So even the priesthood had become corrupt during this time. And um, so this is the time that they lived. And we're going to be introduced to some very interesting people. And uh, let's just get started. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to stand before your people one more time and to share the unadulterated word of God. So we ask you right now for clarity of mind and thought that we may be able to communicate these great truths, that your children may grow and thrive and learn how to appreciate how great thou art. So we thank you tonight. We praise your name tonight, and we ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Now, Samuel uh, lived in this ancient town. Um, and now there was a certain man, actually not not. Well, this Samuel was one of God's prophets, but uh, this this is the story of how he came into being and why it's so important even in this day and time. And in fact, as, as, the more I think about it, I think it is very timely that we go into this, especially in this political climate, this this season that we have seen uh, one of the. Uh, biggest subjects that have been on a lot of folk mind like abortion you know that's an important thing to a lot of folk the um, uh, uh, there, there are two sides to that but one thing that we have to understand is God gives us the ability to make choices and um, you, you know, those of you that know me know that I am, I have been pro-life all my life, but I'm also pro-quality of life. Uh, I, I believe that in the sanctity of life. But I also recognize that folk have the ability to make choices for themselves. And, and, and what we learn, what we need to learn how to do is choose the things that God chooses. And we, but he gives us the ability to choose something else. And it's just that simple. Now there was a certain man of Ramoth um, Zotham of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroam, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, and Ephratite. And he had two wives. The name of one wife was Hannah, and the name of the other, Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And we're going to stop right there and just kind of saturate on that. He had two wives. One of his wives had children. She was fertile, and the other one was barren. Now, let me tell you a little something about um, the Jewish people in that day, in that time. Uh, 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 they believed that children were a blessing from God. And if you don't believe me, open up your Bibles. I want you to turn quickly to Psalm 127. Psalm 127. Just, I, I don't just make stuff up. I, if I tell you that um, there's a, um, that if I make an assertion, I'm going to give you the biblical proof. Psalm 127, beginning at verse number 3. Lo, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. The, as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed. They shall speak with the enemies in the gate. That's a powerful 
word. So children are a blessing, are a, are a gift from God. Now that's the biblical principle. That's not necessarily the principle in our society where uh, um, you, you, we want to give people the ability to choose not the thing that God wants. We don't value childbirth the way they did in that day. Because children can be messy. They'll mess up your life. They'll mess up your, your finances. They'll mess up your, uh, uh, the ease of your comfort. Uh, they require a lot of work, and everybody don't want to put that work in. But the only way that God can bless humanity is through the womb of a woman. And when sometimes the church lose sight of that. Because here we are, we are, we want to uh, protest for a woman's right to choose. And she has the right to choose. And she should have. And uh, see, there is a, but the consequence of choosing to terminate a pregnancy, I, see, I believe that, that the cure for cancer or the cure for AIDS probably could have already been in the earth. But someone may have made the decision to terminate that pregnancy, to abort that child, to murder that child. The one that God put into the earth, that God designed, God put into the earth for the purpose of curing cancer, or curing AIDS, or curing some of the uh, or solving the problem that we have to deal with here in the earth. So this man, he had two wives. One of them had a bunch of children and the other one didn't. And this man went up out of the city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And his two sons, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. So the, the priest was a man by the name of Eli, and Eli had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. Now, y'all might have heard me talk about Hophni and Phinehas before. These were the two raggedest jokers in the history of the Bible. Two outright scallywags. Uh, they were about as bad as Don Jr. and Eric Trump. So if you could imagine somebody like that, I mean, they were, you're talking about two outright scallywags. Now, see, the way the, the priests were of the house of Levi, and only Levites could be priests. So Hophni and Phinehas, they were, in, they were in the Levitical priesthood. Their father was a priest, but these jokers, are, uh, uh, they were nothing like their daddy. And, and Eli was an old man with the, his son was supposed to be get, uh, uh, preparing them. He was supposed to be preparing them to take over the priesthood. They were doing the work, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the sacrifices, when the people bring in the sacrifices, the, uh, the, the priest would get a portion. But uh, 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 we'll get to Hoffman and Phineas in a little while. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and to all her sons and daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. So he had two wives, one of them was a fertile myrtle and the other one was, um, was barren, but he loved his wife. In fact, the only reason he had the second wife is because his first wife, Hannah, couldn't have no children. And he wanted children. So he got a second wife, one who was able to have children. But that didn't stop him from loving Hannah. See, uh, uh, the law allowed for multiple wives as long as you took care of all of them. And we see here in these verses that Elkanah took care of, of all his wives and, and the children. So he did what a man supposed to do. The problem in our society, our men have a tendency to run away from that obligation. And when you got multiple baby mamas, somebody baby mama getting left out and the other one don't. 
But this one that had no, that who was not a baby mama, he was just a just a, a wife. He gave her the portion. He gave her a a I wouldn't say a double portion, but he uh, um, he gave her a worthy portion. And he and her adversary also provoke her sore to make her fret because the Lord has shut up her womb. So the other wife, the second wife, uh, Panina, used to tease her, used to mock her, used to make her feel bad because she couldn't have no children. And in that society, if you could have children, you were better than somebody who couldn't have children. And she would not let her forget it. You might, he might have gave you a good portion, but I got the children. And she used to make her life miserable. Made her feel real bad. And he did so year by year. And when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. So uh, uh, every year she go up with, and they do the sacrifice based on how many children you got. And when the, when the sacrifice is done, you brought some home, and that's what y'all ate once and when it once it was consecrated. And they, they would have a feast on the sacrifice. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? For am, am not I better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after she had eaten in Shiloh after they had drunk, and Eli the priest sat upon the seat by a post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. So here, Hannah is praying to God, praying for a child. And she bowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. Now what she is doing, she made the vow of the Nazarite. The vow of the Nazarite. No razor on his head. That means she wasn't going to... Uh, drink, you know, if she got pregnant, she would not drink any strong wine. She would not. Uh, she would uh, uh, treat her body as a vessel of the Lord, as she was carrying that child. And that, and it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. So Eli, the priest, could see her praying, but he couldn't hear her. She, she, you know, you know how you pray sometimes and you ain't making no noise. Folk can hear you. Folk can't hear you, but they, they can see your lips moving. So here he is. He, he, he's observing her. And, and that's what, uh, um, you, you know, you, these first 20 verses, this is really uh, just kind of letting us see how the, the birth of Samuel. So this, so, so, and Hannah spake in her heart, only her lips moved. But her voice was not heard, therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. So Eli see her mumbling, he can't hear nothing, he, he thinks she drunk the first thing in the morning. And Eli said unto her, How long would thou be drunken? Put away thine put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah said, answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial. Belial, that's the, another name for the devil. Don't, 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 don't act like I'm one of them kind of women, because I'm not like that. For out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken here too. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition, for thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. And they arose. Let me stop right there for a minute. Sometimes we're in a depression. We need to have us some counsel. And, uh, you know, I, I thank you, Lord, for giving me this, because um, the truth of the matter is I'm so glad it's Wednesday night and we're doing Bible study, because, I, 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 quite frankly, I'm still a little depressed over the results of the election. Okay, I admit that. And sometimes we need that counsel. We sometimes we need to hear a word from somebody that soothed our soul, and that's what Eli's doing for Hannah right now. God will bring people into your life that will speak a word to you. 
so that you can get out of the funk. So after she spoke with Eli, she went and she ate and uh, and she 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 just just picked up. Uh, Eli was a blessing to her. And they arose up early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to the house in Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife. Y'all, that when Elkanah knew his wife. Elkanah knew his wife. That means they, they came together as man and wife and had sexual intercourse. And the Lord remembered her. That prayer was answered. Eli told her that God had heard her. Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived, she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. That name Samuel. Samuel literally means heard from God, heard of God. So he was Samuel's answered prayer. That child was answered prayer. But, but Hannah didn't stop there. Verse 21, uh, uh, 21 verses uh, 21 through 28, we're going to see Samuel give unto the Lord. Check this out. The man Elkanah and all his house were up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah went not up, and she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned. And then I will bring him, that he may appear before the Lord, and there abide forever. So after her child is weaned, after he is old enough to not need her as to give him suck, she gonna leave him at the temple. That was her plan, because she had, she was going to give him to God. That seemed kind of radical, but you if you, you you want God's favor, give your children to God. Let God have them. Now, we can't just leave them at the church house no more. So what do you mean, Pastor, about let God have the children? You pray for them. You give them over to it. You, you say, Lord, uh, 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 order my child's step. Uh, uh, do for him what only you can do. And in this case, Hannah made the decision to leave Samuel at the temple, and he was going to be up. He was going he was he would live the life of a priest or prophet. Uh, I was uh, watching something, looking at something on the internet one day, and um, there was a picture of a little boy. He might have been two or three years old, and the caption read, "Baby Bishop." That boy, little, little, little small little black boy, he had suspenders on. He was dressed up like he was going to church, and uh, and uh, the, 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 the he's a comedian now. He's making fun of him. He was. He, he wasn't really, he wasn't ridiculed for him, but he, he had fun with it. Baby Bishop. He said that boy was ordained the bishop out the womb. He, he just speculated when he go to kindergarten, he go instead of, uh, 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 he go to lunch, he want to have a prayer, uh, uh, a prayer in, in kindergarten. You know how they used to call you uh, uh, Pastor D-Lo? But all you, all of you were scared. Uh, that little boy wasn't going to be scared. You, you can see the anointing on it. I've seen little children like that way. I mean, I was at a, a funeral uh, in a park a couple of weeks ago. And um, what the funeral director at, um, uh, let's see, a funeral director at uh, uh, Xander's had the little boy there. He might have been about eight years old. That boy got preached all over. I mean, he, he's so comfortable. Most of the children are scared of dealing with a funeral home and dealing with funerals, or dealing with the dead, but he, he ain't scared of that. Uh, he had, there's an anointing on that little boy, and you can see it. You Sometimes you see little children that God, that, that God is going to use someday. And, and when, when the, the parents embrace it, and, but the, when the children accept that role at an early age, oh, I wish I could have got saved at an early age. I wouldn't be preaching, I wouldn't be here. I'd be in a place with one of them. I'm just, you know, I'm just speculating. Maybe God, that's just what he want me. In fact, when he called me to preach, he told me it ain't going to be like that. 
Because if I gave you too much too soon, you'd get the big head. So, he, so that's what God told me. But he still wants me to do what I'm doing. I just can't do it on that grand scale. You don't get to preach to 20,000 people. You can't get to 200. And that's it. Because you got 20,000 people, they'll find you in some hotel room dead because you done got the big head and got, got beside yourself. Happen all the time. If you see so many preachers fall, especially lately, because they got too big and they forgot God, they forgot about the assignment. Well, you see, uh, uh, this boy, uh, uh, this child was going to have an assignment. His mama had already dedicated him to the Lord. And Elkanah, her, her husband, said unto her, what do seemeth be good? Tarry until thou hast weaned him. Only the Lord establishes his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bullocks and one ephah of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And, ch and the child was young and they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. My goodness. So she brought him to the temple after he was weaned and left him with Eli the priest because she knew that was his she had made that promise to God and she going to keep her promise so she lend her child guess what when we lend our children to the Lord they're going to tell them what God going to do with them if the children cooperate the blessings of God will be upon them isn't that amazing this is what we talk about. This is the reason why you be, don't be in such a hurry to, to terminate that pregnancy. Because you don't know what God got in store. You don't know what God got in store. I got a cousin, uh, 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 Apostle T.C. Maxwell. T.C. was preaching when he was 13 years old. And the rest of us was shooting marbles. T.C. was preaching the gospel. He's got a dynamic, he done probably done started and uh, done, done planted 10 churches. But he started, he was 13 years old. Chapter 2. Chapter 2, we see after the child is born, Hannah is not one of them women who, I mean, she's serious about serving God. And uh, this is Hannah's prayer. Really, verse the first eleven verses is Hannah's prayer, and Hannah's prayer sounds like when I, if you read, if you just open your Bible and come right there, you think you're reading from the Psalms. It reads just like the Psalm. It reads like it, it's as powerful as something David did. And Hannah prayed and said, "My heart, my heart rejoices in the Lord." My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee. There is, there is, neither is there any rock like our God. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bowels of the mighty men are the bowls of the mighty men are broken, and they that stumble and girded with strength, they that were full have hired out themselves for bread, they that were hungry cease, so that the barren have borne seven, and she that had many children is wax feeble. The Lord killeth and maketh alive, he bringeth down to the grave, he bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lift up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the glory, the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he hath set the world upon them and he will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness 
for by strength shall no man prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto the king, and exalt the horn of his anointed. And Elkanah went to Ramah to his house, and the child did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. So after she has rendered this prayer of thanksgiving to God, this, this is an act of worship, where she's worshiping God and she's going to leave her child at that temple and that's where he's going to stay the rest of his day. That's where he's going to stay. Now, here at verse 12, <coughs> we learn a little bit more about the sons of Eli. Now the sons of Eli, this is Hophni and Phineas, they knew not the Lord. Now here they are, they priests, but they, they did not have a relationship with God. You know how many preachers it is right now that don't really have a relationship with God? They preach a, 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 a liberal theology that does not require the blood of Jesus Christ. They don't believe in salvation. They don't believe in holiness. Uh, they believe in, I don't know what they believe in, but they don't believe the Bible. They just in it for the money. They in it for the show. They, they in it for for uh, because it, it, it's a livelihood. But they don't believe God's word. Uh, they don't believe in the authority of Scripture. They are not surrendered to the power of the Holy Ghost. Right now, it's a lot, a lot of liberal churches that, that will tell you that you don't need to to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin. That you're going to go to heaven anyway. All you got to do to go to heaven is die. Now the sons of Eli were the sons of Belial. And they knew not the Lord. And the, and the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest's servant came while the flesh was in seething with the flesh hook of three teeth in his hands. And he struck it with, into the pan and the kettle or called on a pot. All that the flesh hook brought up the priest took for himself. So there, so they did in Shiloh unto all Israelites that came hither. So that's how the priest would get their portion. As the, the sacrifice was in the pot, they put the, the spear in, and whatever they pulled up, that was the priest. That was how the sacrifice fed the priesthood. Also, before they burned the fat, the priest's servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, Give flesh to roast for the priest, for he will not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. And if any man said unto him, Let him, let them not fail to burn the fat presently, and then they take as much as thy soul desired, and he would not, and he would answer, say, Nay. But neither shall give it me now. If not, I will take it by force. So this is what the sons of Eli, instead of allowing the 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 meat that should go on the the the, the burning altar on the fire on the burning altar, this would be the part that would be consumed in the fire. They would take it for themselves. They had them a racket going. They would, instead of letting it go on the fire to give off a sweet aroma for the Lord, they took it for themselves and they were selling it. They were selling the meat that should have been sacrificed. They were selling it at the back door. These are the two sons of Eli. And Eli would let them get away with it. He couldn't stop them. He didn't try to stop them. Wherefore, the sin of the young men were very great before the Lord. For men abhorred the offering for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child, girded with the linen ephod. Samuel wasn't even, uh, wasn't even supposed to be there. But Samuel doing right by God. And the ones who were supposed to be there, they were making a, a sport. They had a racket going. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year. And when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice, and Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife, 
and said, The Lord giveth thee seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to the Lord. And they went unto their own home. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And Samuel grew before the Lord. So here it is. She was faithful. She, she said, Lord, if you give me this child, I'm going to give him back to you. And she did just that. But God gave her more children. All these years, she couldn't have children. So she, God, she prayed to God. God heard her prayer, gave her Samuel. And she gave Samuel back to the Lord. And God gave her more children. That verse 22. Now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel, how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. They turned the, they, they turned the temple into a trick house. And he said unto them, Why do you do such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all this people. Nay, my sons, it is no, for it is no good report that I hear. You make the Lord people to transgress. They're cutting up so bad in the church, they got the people sinning. They, 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 they making out with the women. They got the racket going with the meeting at the back door. And the people going along with it, because see, they know they're not supposed to buy that meat. Somebody in good faith bring the meat to the temple, they bring the, the animal sacrifice, and Hawkeye and Finney is selling it out the back door. And the people who buy it ain't got no business doing that. And they and they, and they and they basically they they don't turn the temple into one of the pagan houses uh, 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 where they had the vestal virgins they would uh, have sex with the women as part of their religious ritual. That's what the pagans did. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. And the child Samuel grew on, and was in favor both with the Lord and also with men. Verse 27, the Lord rejects. Verses 27 to 36, we see the, the Lord rejecting the household of Eli. To Eli had, it was Eli's responsibility to keep them sons in check. If he couldn't stop them, he shouldn't even let them participate. He shouldn't have even let them participate. Sometimes you got to sit some folk down in church. Uh, and pastors don't like doing that, but sometimes folk get so bad, you got to sit folk down in church. Uh, uh, I know a pastor friend of mine had these two sons. In fact, I used to nickname them. I, I would tell them this in their face. But my nickname for it was Hoffman and Phineas. Because that's what they, uh, they, were, they were just messing with all the girls at that church. I called them Hoffman and Phineas. That was my nickname for it. My kind of personal nickname. Uh, because that's what they were doing. They caused a lot of problems in, 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 in that ministry. Uh, got girls pregnant. And, you know, these are young women that in church being seduced by the sons of the pastor. Happen all the time. And did all, and did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon my altar, to burn incense, to wear the ephod before me? Did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Wherefore, kick ye at my sacrifice and my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honor thy sons above me, to make yourself fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Wherefore, the Lord God of Israel said, I have indeed that the ha that thy house and the house of thy father so walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, Be it far from me. For them that honor me I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. 
Behold, the day is come that I will cut off thine arm and the arm of thy father's house, and there shall not be an old man in thine house. And thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation, and all the wealth which God shall give Israel, there shall not be an old man in thine house forever. And the man of thine, whom I shall not cut off from mine altar, shall be to consume thine eyes, and to grieve thine heart, and all the increase of thine house shall die in the flower of their age, and this shall be a sign unto thee. Thou shalt come upon thy two sons, on Hophni and Phinehas, in one day they shall die, both of them. So he's telling, he telling Eli, both of your sons are going to die in the same day. And that's how you know I did it. And I will raise up me a faithful priest that shall do according to all to that which is in my heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before my anointed forever. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left in thine house shall come and crouch to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread, and shall say, Put me, I pray thee, into one of the priest's offices, that I may eat a piece of bread. Uh, 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 what do you mean by that? Whoever left in your family going to come and bow before the Lord. And it's going to be so bad. They're going to come begging. But they're going to be nothing for them. This is the this is the damage that Samuel did by not correcting his sons. He he endangered the posterity of his entire family line by letting those two sons just run havoc. None of their children were gonna live to ripe old ages. The whole household was gonna be cut off. And that was the curse that went upon them. And that brings us to chapter 3, where the Lord calls Samuel. This is very important here. What we can learn as we look at this chapter, you see, the boy Samuel, who was lent to God from his mama, dedicated to God from, 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 from the time he was born, from before he was born, he was the answer to a promise, but he was also the object of a commitment. The boy Samuel was Eli's. The boy Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days, and there was no open vision. So we had the priest. Doing the, the priesthood, but there was no open vision, there was no word, nobody was bringing a word from God. They were just, they were just abiding by the, the rituals. There was no word, they were, they, they were going through the motions, but there was no power in it because there was no word. There were, there, there was no open vision, there were, you know, somebody might have seen some things that God was saying. But it was rare. And it came to pass when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see when he went to bed and he was, you know, by this time he was almost blind. And, 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 the, and, and, and ere the lamp of, of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was and Samuel was laid down to sleep that the Lord called Samuel and said, and he said, he answered, here am I. And he ran to Eli and said, here am I, for, the, for thou callest me. And uh, he said, this is uh, Eli talking to Samuel, I call not, lie down again. And he went and lay down. See, God is talking to, to Samuel. Samuel could hear the voice of God, but Eli couldn't. And the Lord yet again, the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou did call me. And he answered, And I call not my son, lie down again. 
Now Samuel did not know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. This is how God is revealing himself to Samuel. He's, he's speaking in a small voice. But Samuel can hear. He don't understand it yet, but he can hear the voice of God. You see, when you raise up a child in righteousness, the voice of God is the, the audible voice of God. God, God is whispering. He's not shouting from the mountaintop. And you can hear when your heart is right. And the Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou did call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Eli couldn't hear him, but Eli realized God was talking to his child. Boy, I wish God could talk to my children. Well, how many thing is they, they, they did not, they weren't even trying to hear from God. They were doing the priesthood. Uh, it was a racket. It was just, uh, they were just going through the motions. Uh, it, it, it was a way to make money for them. It was a way to, to, to engage in sexual activity with the, with the women. They were, they were, you know, they were in it for sport. Uh, uh, therefore, Eli said unto Samuel, "Go lie down again. It shall be, if he call thee, thou, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth." So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood and called out at other times, "Samuel, Samuel!" Then Samuel answered, "Speak, for thy servant heareth." When God speak to you, that's how you're supposed to respond. Speak, Lord. I'm hearing. I'm listening. When you have a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, you're going to be filled. Since Samuel was raised to, to, to <coughs> he, he, his, his mama had been prayed for him as a child, so as God began to reveal himself, he was amenable to what God was doing. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. And in that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. And when I begin, I will also make an end. For I told him that I would judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. This is God talking to Samuel. Samuel is still young. He done grew up now. This is, remember now, they're coming year after year with the sacrifice. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. And Samuel lay into the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord and Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Samuel didn't want to tell Eli what that vision was because it was such a pronounced judgment on them. Samuel didn't want to tell him. This is bad news. This is, uh, Samuel did not want to tell the man who raised him that God going to kill you and your sons. That your whole household is going to be wiped out. That nobody's going to get old in your household. Because you let your sons run roughshod through the worship through the house of God. Well, you got here late. Uh, dealing with them. Um, Hophni and Phineas. Hophni and Phineas were two worthless jokers. They were sons of the priests, and they were supposed to be the priest's helper. They're supposed to be doing the work of the priesthood with their father, who was the who was the priest at Shiloh. And instead of doing the sacrifice, and people come and bring the sacrifice, they send them to meet out the back door. When women come to worship, they have having sex with the young women. They, you know, they just total scatterbags. <coughs> it reminds me of Don Jr. and Eric Trump trying to be in, the, in government. And he said, What is the thing that the Lord hath said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. God do so to thee, and more also if thou hide anything from me of all the things that he said unto thee. And Samuel told him every whit, and hid nothing from him, and he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth good. One thing about it now, uh, uh, Eli took it like a man, because he knew he had it coming. He didn't make no excuses. He knew he had it coming. 
He knew he had it coming. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. My goodness, boy, I sure wish I could get, I could preach like that where none of my words fall to the ground. Every time I preach, somebody gets something. Lord, Huh? Huh? Lord, let me let give me that kind of uh, 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 authority. Yeah, yeah. For every time I open my mouth and preach, not a single word falls to the ground. But every time I preach, somebody gets something. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm grateful. I, I mean, I can see people growing. I can see people getting better. And, and I do work. But uh, every now and then, it's the folk that I've been preaching to. I don't see them making no progress. And that really breaks my heart. And all Israel from Dan to Bethsheba knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. And that's how this first three chapters came. The Lord appeared in Shiloh. And he used Samuel. Because Samuel's mama prayed to God for a child. And she said, if you, if you give me a child, Lord, I'm going to give him to you, and you can be with him if you choose. Imagine that when we give our children over to the Lord. That's what you're supposed to do. You can't worry about what they're going to be, what they're going to do. You give them to God and say, Lord, they're yours. You keep them covered in prayer. You try to live upright in front of them, and maybe they'll catch it. Maybe they will be inspired, but you can't do like Eli and just let them do anything because all children would rather eat Twinkies than spinach. Twinkie ain't nothing to do with Twinkies. It's just sweet and ain't going to make you fat and unhealthy. Spinach good for you but it don't, it don't taste all that good. Uh, every child would rather watch cartoons than read a book. If you don't give, put an environment in place where they, and, and, and force them to read a book, they will do nothing but play video games and eat, and, and, and watch cartoons all day. Our uh, Lord, you're talking to me too. I'm looking at a joker playing a video game now instead of listening to the word of God. I ain't calling no names, but I know what I'm looking at. Just get to look up. God know what he's doing. And when we trust God with our children, he's got his he God brings them. Remember, they are a they are the heritage of God. And when we bring them into the world and give them over to God, God can do something with them. And if we don't, and, and you let the world do it, you're gonna end up with Hoffney and Phineas. I don't know about you, but I don't want no Hoffney and Phineas. I'd rather have me a Samuel. I think most of us do. You, you know, I, I said earlier that the, the womb of a woman is God's portal. It's like anybody ever watched Star Trek. Y'all remember they, how they beam somebody from the starship to the land? Well, if God wants to bring something into the earth, his, his transporter pad is the womb of a woman. I, I really believe that, that, that cancer would already be cured. If the, if the ability to have an abortion was not known, or was not practiced, or was not chosen. See, God we can God gave us the ability to choose. And we can choose things that God did not choose. But there's always unintended consequences. Now I understand that they 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 abandoned, they 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 uh, uh, passed the laws to outlaw abortion. They outlawed Roe v. Wade. They uh, they made it so that women could not have the health care they need, and part of that health care is uh, the doctors are afraid to do certain medical procedures because they are offshoots of an abortion. But if a baby done already died in a woman's womb, uh, you got to be able to let that woman, the doctors, take care of her. Because the unintended consequences of an abortion ban, you got women dying of sepsis because they done miscarried. And a miscarriage, to remove the miscarriage is the same procedure as an abortion. 
with, with no exception for the life of a mother, but that young girl that get raped and have a baby. If she makes the decision to keep that baby, that baby might be the one to cure AIDS, to cure cancer. But if that woman has, if she makes the decision to keep that baby, for whatever reason, then society need to be there to help her in those areas that she would not be able to do on her own. Give her child care. Uh, give her food stamps. Give her some kind of help. She made a decision to allow God. So we have to be God's agents in the earth. Just like Hannah left her child at the, at, at the, the temple. We leave our children. We give them over to God. And government is an agency of God. Don't let nobody kid you. Government is an agency of God. So it's okay for the government to help. Because you are an agent of God. But you got no business making that decision for women. For those that decide to honor God, we got to do what we can to help them. And those that decide to make a choice that that does not honor God, that was not necessarily God's choice. The unintended consequence is the blessing that could have been yours, it could have been society, you have removed it. And we don't know what it's going to be. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to, to share this word with your people. I pray that it does not fall on the ground. So we thank you. We love you tonight. We ask you to just give us, forgive us of our sin and our prayers are not hindered. I lift up the nation tonight, Lord, as we deal with the, the prospect of four more years of Donald J. Trump as President of the United States. Touch his heart, touch his mind, that the worst impulses that he has already shown, that only by your might and by your spirit that you will curtail those vile impulses that he has already displayed. That he will walk upright. That he will spew no more lies and retribution, but he can that we can that he can change. So change his heart, Lord. Convert him. Only you can do it, Lord. So we ask you right now in the precious and mighty name of Jesus to move your servant prays, and just as Hannah prayed, and you gave her Samuel, this is my prayer, and I pray that you will do this for Donald J. Trump and save his soul and convert his mind, convert his heart, that he can live out of a way that you bring glory and honor to your name and not bring the nation to ruin. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if anybody want to give to the ministry, you may do so using Cash App or Zelle, dollar sign green WL, Zelle 689 uh, Any gift of any amount would be greatly appreciated. Uh, we uh, just thank you for tuning in tonight. Um, we're going to look at chapters 4, 5, and 6 next week. But the first Samuel, this is a fantastic book. And these historical books, they are relevant in our day and in this time, so don't overlook them. Unfortunately, too many preachers just kind of don't see the value. But uh, I believe in preaching and teaching the whole counsel of God. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy, the only true and wise God. May glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and forever, and all of God's people said amen. We see y'all on Sunday at 7474 West Colonial Drive at the Holiday Inn Express meeting room. That's where we have church. Uh, next week we'll be back here at 730. Um, so we see y'all next time.